Hi, I'm Charlie Griffin, and I'm going to walk you through a really uh, quick and easy and simple way to memorize the circle of fifths. It's a very useful tool for uh, composition and for musicians in general. So the circle of fifths is basically just a visual representation of uh, the major scales with the minors on the inside. And as you probably know, the uh, major scale is simply a pattern of whole steps and half steps between pitches. So this is what the pattern looks like. And when we uh, want to play that pattern, it basically sounds like this. So that pattern of half steps and whole steps is simply a look at the spaces in between each of the notes. So when we say whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. We're looking at the distances between each note of the scale. And essentially the what the circle of fifths is, is, a, is just the same pattern um, essentially uh, restarted on any one of the uh, 12 pitches of the chromatic scale. So if you start that on C here and you go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, you'll get all the white notes. If you start it on D, you'll get a different set of pitches, but it's the same pattern. And that's all the circle of fifths really is, is a representation of all these kind of patterns. Now, a couple of mnemonics that will help you kind of just commit it to memory. Um, so you can pick your favorite from this list. Um, fat cats go down alleys eating birds, bagels, burritos, whatever, butter, anything ending with a B, starting with a B, right? So um, that would be one. Or Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Right? We're looking at the first letter of each one of these words. Um, so get this memorized, whichever one you know you like. So fat cats go down alleys eating birds is probably the most common one. I had a student once who made this one up and I've used it ever since, which was Frank can get Dave at every base. Um, okay, so that one and also the word bead. So once you have those two mnemonics, you're kind of ready to go. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to basically show you uh, how this kind of plays out. So I actually have to unplug my uh, keyboard and plug in my tablet so that I can uh, draw this out for you. So basically what you want to do is you want to, uh, let me also get a uh, pencil selected, okay. So you want to start with, now, I'm not super experienced with this pen, but let me give it a shot here. So you want to start with essentially just, you know, the, um, the like a like a target, right? Like so, and that's going to be your your zero, right? Your on uh, okay. It's actually, let me put it this way: it's going to be like a clock face model, right? So this is your twelve o'clock slot, um, your three, your six, and your nine. It's a modified clock face, so we'll talk about that in a second. But um, basically, then you give yourself two notches in between. Right, like so. And that's going to give you 12 relatively evenly spaced notches on the circle of fifths. And again, because this is like a, uh, a modified clock face and, and it's all based on the uh, piano keyboard, um, each one of these is essentially going to map onto one of the chromatic pitches from, uh, of the chromatic scale. Right, so now here we go. Frank, that's an F, can get. Dave at every, sorry, that's an E, every base. So that's your first mnemonic device. Your second one is going to be bead over here. Bead, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. So now that gets us through 11 scales so far. Um, and then we have what I would call the enharmonic area down here on the bottom. So um, the D flat would map on to also the C sharp. Right? So basically, we have two ways of writing the same scale. These are going to sound identical on a piano keyboard. D flat and C sharp are the same note on the piano keyboard. B and C flat, I know that one seems a little weird, but it's true. B and C flat are the same pitch. So, And then uh, right here at the bottom, we have F sharp and G flat. Okay, so it's pretty ugly looking, but this is what I got. Um, and that's it. So this is our clock face model. Now, Here's how this works. So if you want a um, if you want a pitch, I'm going to use the my my hand here for a second. Um, uh, sorry, if you want a scale starting on C, right? We have the one that has zero sharps and zero flats, right? But as we move clockwise along the circle of fifths, we get the scale with one sharp. As we keep going, we get two, we get three, four here, five sharps for B major, 
six sharps for this thing that is actually F sharp major. So this is, sorry this looks so icky, but okay, so it's six sharps here and seven sharps here. And we can't have more than seven sharps uh, before we actually get, get to a point where we're going to use double sharps to make the notation and it just doesn't, it's not practical. All right, so, okay, so as we move clockwise, we accumulate sharps for each scale as we go. And the reason why it's called a circle of fifths in the first place is that as we move up each turn, we actually move up a perfect fifth to get the next scale. That's the one that has the, the accumulated sharps in it. So when we start with nothing, we have nothing in it, we have C. If we have the scale with one sharp in it, it's going to be G. And we keep adding perfect fifths up as we go clockwise. Now as we go counterclockwise, we're going to get the scale with one flat in it, the scale with two flats in it, the scale with three, four, etc. So D flat has five flats in it, while C sharp has seven sharps in it. Again, these are notationally different, but they're going to sound the same. Uh, F sharp major has six sharps in it, while G flat major has six flats in it. They start on the same pitch. It's the same pattern. Um, just by starting on it and calling it a flat, you're going to get a different written version of that scale. And then finally, B major and C flat then has seven. And that's, that's it for the majors. Um, so it's really useful when you combine this idea of where it is located uh, relative to its kind of clock phase position um, and how many sharps or flats it contains. Now, the thing about that, that mnemonic device, here's, the, here's the, where it gets even cooler. So the Frank can get Dave at every base, right? So if I put it here, Frank can get Dave at every base, right? Now, as we accumulate sharps clockwise, we actually are, we could use this same mnemonic device for what's contained in the scale itself. So if we're in G major, we have one sharp. That sharp is F. If we're in D major, we have two. It's F and C. If we're in A major, it's F, C, and G, etc. As we go clockwise, we're just going to keep moving in this direction as we and we accumulate sharps. The cool thing about this is that if we want to go flats, we actually can use the same mnemonic device. It's just going to be the flats going in backwards, essentially, that mnemonic device. So F major has one flat in it. It's B flat. Let me also add here that because F has that B flat in it, that means that all the rest of the letters you see, they're considered to be naturals. They would be white keys on the piano keyboard. So B flat has two flats in it. It's B flat and E flat. E flat major has three. It's B flat, E flat, A flat, and so on as we work our way down to C flat. So you can see, right, when we get to those scales with seven flats or seven sharps, essentially that's a way of saying all of them are sharp for C sharp major, all of them are flat for C flat major. Okay, one final bit now, just to get to the minors on the inside. Basically, the relative minor key is uh, the same uh, pitch content as what's on the outside of the circle but with a different starting point. So basically, what? let me put it this way. If I go to the sixth note of C major, I'm going to get to A. Now, if I start on A and I use all the white notes, I'm going to get a different pattern of half steps and whole steps, um, but it's going to be the same pitch content. So basically, that pattern of half steps and whole steps will give me what we call A natural minor. A natural minor is the same content as C major, but we consider A the starting point. So the half steps and whole steps uh, occur in different places simply re relative to the starting point, um, but the pitch content is the same. So if I go to the sixth note of the G major scale, I'm going to get E minor. So E minor has one sharp in it, it's F sharp. D major's relative minor is B. Now this one is can maybe be a little tricky, it can kind of throw us off, but so A major, you go up six letter names from A, so you have A, B, C, D, E, F, right? That's your six in A major, but it's not just F, it's actually F sharp, right? Because A major has three sharps in it, so F is one of them, so it has to start on F sharp, not on F. And then you just keep going that way for the rest of it. So there's no simple way, really, I think, to memorize the minors on the inside, but if you know the relationship between the minor on the inside and the major on the outside, it's really a piece of cake to just kind of fill it in, right? So just go to the sixth note of the scale on the outside. So F sharp major's 
uh, sixth note is D sharp, G flat majors, sixth note is E flat. So because we have two keys, uh, you know, two, two scales on the outside here, we're going to have for each slot, we're going to have two minor scales on the inside for each slot. So it'll be B flat minor for D flat major and A sharp uh, minor for C sharp major. F, C, G, the D. And that's your circle of fifths.